Kobe tweeted throughout the game, and he was tweeting, get the ball inside, get the ball inside. Would you agree with all, with that? Yeah, that's what we did. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I would think so. It's great to have that commentary. Yeah. <laughs> he's a fan right now. You know, and he's a fan, and you guys put a little bit more importance on that kind of fan, but he, he's a fan, and he gets excited, and I'm sure, you know, he'll, uh, you know, he's gonna be, he wants to be part of it, which I don't blame him, so it's good. Dan Tony saying Kobe's a fan. Kobe then tweets a fan, question mark, question mark, LOL, hashtag microphone talks. Stephen A., Kobe just a fan. Uh, I'm going to need you to go. You know something? <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, moving over. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. This, this is the kind of stuff I, I, I can't even tell Wait, you. Wait, should I, I just take a break? Yeah, yeah, just go to the cafeteria. I, 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 you I just coffee? need you to yeah. take a break right now, Skip, okay. because, see, this is the kind of stuff that really rakes my nerves. <laughs> I don't understand... A, the unmitigated goal. Uh -oh. Let me tell you something, man. Uh -oh. Mike D'Antoni should stand in a public forum today and issue a public apology to Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. The nerve, the unmitigated goal, the disgusting comments that this man has made. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't want to use this word early in the morning, but Mike D'Antoni, who the hell do you think you are? You are talking about Kobe Bryant here, a fan who happens to be a five-time world champion, who happens to be one of the greatest players we have ever seen, a former league MVP, a former NBA Finals MVP, one of the greatest players who have ever played this game, who has done it all wearing purple and gold, and you who just arrived in town barely over 500, 40 and 32 on the season, struggling with the number 22 ranked defense, squeaking into the playoffs at an eighth, as an eighth seed. You have the nerve to sit there and call Kobe Bryant a fan. This is the kind of disrespect. And it is so disrespectful what he did that I'm sorry, it mandates a public apology. A public apology. Who do you think you are? Then, then let's put this in perspective here. You get the job. And let's, let's, let's just backtrack and rewind this and call it what it is. Because I'm tired of holding back. I think I've held back enough. You look at Mike. You haven't held back oh, at all. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. <laughs> Let's put this in perspective. Mike D'Antoni is a man that averaged 58 wins a season in Phoenix in four complete years. He's no scrub as a coach. But at the same time, there is, the, there is nothing about him that you associate with greatness. Mm -hmm. The reality is, is that he's got some things to learn. But more importantly than anything else, I got news for you. And it needs to be said right here, right here over these airwaves right now. Mike D'Antoni, one of the biggest things he needs to learn is cultivating relationships with players. Yeah. You come to New York City, you don't want Carmelo Anthony. You alienate Carmelo Anthony before he even arrives, by the time he arrives, okay? And then ultimately that leads to yours because 18 and 24 last year, ultimately getting you booted out the door. By the way, Mike Whitson for the New York Knicks is, is like... 45, almost 50 games over 500 since Mike D'Antoni left. All right, so you got that relationship issue, okay? You come to Los Angeles, you start the job. This is literally and factually correct. You start the job on a Tuesday night for the Los Angeles Lakers. That Friday against Memphis, you bench pile the soul. You do. A two-time champion, one of the most versatile big men in the game. Not yeah. only do you bench him, but you disrespect him by talking about his lack of production. As if you've had a tick. You haven't even had a chance to put on put a tic-tac in your mouth before <laughs> you sit there and insult this man who's brought two championships to L.A. Okay, so then all of a sudden you talk about how, well, you know what, we got to cater to our franchise player. Then near the end of the season, you alienate my, Dwight Howard to the point where he's sitting there saying, could you throw the ball inside? And you dismiss him after dismissing Paul Gasol, which, by the way, early in the season, you dismissed Kobe because some of the suggestions that Kobe was making, you basically were saying to him, you play our coach. You want to do things your way, even though your way hasn't proven to work on a championship level. 
And then last but not least, here we come with Kobe. Do I think that Kobe's tweets were a bit too much? I'm here to tell you. Absolutely, I do. There gets to a point in time where it's like, all right, chill out because you know what? A little bit too much tweeting. You might be making the players uncomfortable. You never know what kind of residual effect that could have or whatever. But it is clear that he didn't look at it that way at the time. He's just looking at his team, doing what he always does, and he's home bored to death and is driving him crazy that he couldn't play. So that's all. So that's why I applaud him coming out with the tweet after. You know what? I didn't mean anything by it. I need to chill. But that's entirely separate and apart from Mike D'Antoni because Mike D'Antoni doesn't mind at all how he comes across. It's like everybody is a hindrance. Everybody is an annoyance. He wants to do what he wants to do. That's why he lost his job in Phoenix because Steve Kerr, by the way, a five-time champion and an executive that knew knew something about the game of basketball and about winning championships, had the temerity, yeah. had the unmitigated goal skip to sit there and say, could you take Tom Thibodeau as your defensive specialist? Mm -hmm. Could you do that, please? I think he knows what he's doing. No, I don't want him. So you end up relocating, uprooting yourself and your family simply because you didn't want to bring on a guy that was recognized then and now has proven to be the brightest defensive mind in the game of basketball. So you alienate that portion. Then you go to New York, you do it with Carmelo. Now you're in L.A., you do it with Gasol, you do it with Dwight Howard, and now you do it with Kobe Bryant? Kobe? Bottom line is this. Who does this man think he is? Enough's enough. It has to stop. This man needs to issue a public apology to Kobe Bryant today. And if he doesn't do it, Laker Nation should be sitting there saying, it's time for us to move on. Think you will? I think so. Does he have too much pride? He's got a lot of pride. Lot. He's got too much pride. But he ain't stupid. I strongly suggest to Mike D'Antoni, today he needs to issue an apology to Kobe Bryant, a fan. Kobe Bryant's the face of that franchise. Kobe Bryant's a five-time champion, mm -hmm. who, by the way, at age 34, all right, having compiled 54,031 minutes, you were still using for 45 minutes a game in the month of April. You still used for 38.6 minutes per game this season, which was second in the league, tied with Damian Lillard, and second only to Lou Aldang of the Chicago Bulls. He was a fan then when you were using him and running him into the ground at age 34 in his 17th season. Was he a fan a week ago, two weeks ago? But he's a fan now, right? Mm -hmm. It's very disrespectful. It's very disrespectful, and somebody needs to say something about it. I'm saying something about it. He owes Kobe Bryant a public apology Today, today, not tomorrow, not before game two, today. You have now spewed issues all over the Bristol countryside. Uh -huh. They're hanging from the rafters, mm -hmm. and I'm going to have to pick one to start with. Go ahead. I'm going to pick what you keep saying about Mike D'Antoni, that he, he is a good basketball coach. I disagree. I think he is being exposed with the Los Angeles Lakers. I see no system. I see no plan. I see no strategy. I see one mistake after another, including one yesterday. Before Preach. I get into my, my big rant here. <laughs> yes. Why? With Steve Nash coming off back and hamstring, do you force Start. him, force him back into the starting lineup when he's kind of chop-stepping around, he's not sure, and he admitted after the game, I'm struggling, I'm out of rhythm, I'm off, I'm not right. Who had carried that team, Carry yeah. in the last two games? Steve, Steve Blake. Blake. Right. 23 and 24, and in the first quarter, Steve Blake gets one shot while Nash takes five shots. Not good, not right. What's he doing? He is reaching back for the glory of seven seconds or less in Phoenix. Remember, that's how he made his mystique. That's right. how he got the next job, because the great Jack McCallum did a book on seven seconds or less. He revolutionized the game of basketball. We play no more defense. We want them to score quickly because we're going to score even more quickly in seven seconds. Am I right about that? That's right. You are okay. absolutely All right. that is being exposed. You forced Steve Nash in, and as soon as I saw that, I said, Lakers are in trouble. Steve Blake doesn't get the basketball enough. He's he's hot. He's, he's on ready. fire. Yes. You know, you need to play inside, outside with Dwight and Powell. You need somebody to make a couple threes. They go three for 15 from three. And when Blake finally got going, it was too late because Ginobili had happened. And once Ginobili happened, which shocked me, ball game. Dagger three at the end of the third quarter. Now back to what happened after the game. In Hollywood, you know this better than anyone. Image is everything. 
everything that comes out of your mouth is going to be dissected at that post-game podium. Right. Dan Tony has no edit button at all. He just spouts. He just reacts to what somebody says on the fly. And you're right. It comes off as astonishingly disrespectful to one of the greatest players who ever played. Now, as you point out, is it fair for that great player to sit on his couch in this social media age and instantaneously critique the head coach from his couch? It is not fair, but you do not dismiss it publicly because it doesn't work publicly. And he constantly says the wrong thing publicly to Powell, but he can sort of get away with that for a while because it is just Powell. You can't get away with it to this guy. This is Kobe Bean Bryant for all the reasons you said and Kobe is emotional. It is killing him. As he as he said, he, he used that, you know, he said, nothing worse than watching your brother struggle. This is one of the last tweets. And you can't do you know what about it. Right. That's Kobe in a nutshell. He's sitting on his couch, and it's killing him not to play. That's when I tweeted to him. The difference in that game right. was that if Lakers did not have the Mamba, and the Spurs suddenly and shockingly to me had the the Mamba named Ginobili, Mamba Ginobili, yeah, right, right? right? Yeah. That's what Yesterday happened. That's the difference. That, that just boils no down that game. So at the end of the night, Kobe had a really deep introspective tweet in which he said, I see my tweeting during the game as being talked about as much as the game itself. Yes. That's what we, we're leading with it here. We're not talking about the game. And he concludes, not my intention, just bored, I guess. And then he hashtag not again. Not so again. he's saying, okay, okay, I get it. This conversation could have been had behind closed doors. Right. Like Mike could have called him after the game and said, hey, big guy, you're killing me. You know, I'm having I'm on the hot seat already here. I'm having enough trouble trying to figure out how to coach this team. And you're you're killing me publicly. Please, please be a, go a little easier on me publicly. Wouldn't that be a fair conversation? It would have been a fair conversation. Yeah. But I think what's egregious about what Mike D'Antoni did, Skip, is that Kobe did all of that before D'Antoni reacted the way he that did. He did. And you still elected to react. And it wasn't just his words. See how he rolled his eyes and how dismissive he was? And there's a history of him being dismissive. He was dismissive towards Kobe. He was dismissive about Dwight Howard. He was dismissive about Powell Gasol. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's a problem. You know why? He still thinks he's that genius who invented seven seconds or less. He sure. carries himself. He sure. speaks. And by he the reacts way, like and he's by the that way, guy. And by the not, way, I don't know what game Mike D'Antoni was coaching or watching, but when he says he threw the ball inside, no. Yeah. You threw the ball to the big boys, but you didn't throw it to them inside. Uh -huh. I saw Paul Gasol launching 15-foot shots. Yeah. That's not throwing it inside. But Stephen it's A., you not know, throwing Dan, it inside. D'Antoni tried to clean it up. He realizes he was saying that, ha, 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 he's a fan now, you know, and, and Kobe's really passionate about the game. That, that was the flashpoint. Was let's call Kobe a fan? Come on. Listen, listen, it, was, it was a flashpoint. Let me tell you something right now. And, and, and I'm going to. And I don't know because I haven't spoken to the Lakers. Okay. But I've known many people within the Lakers organization for years, and John Black is one of the very best to have ever done it. He's their head of media relations. And I don't know, because I haven't spoken to John Black. Forgive me. Forgive me for mentioning your name on television. I'm willing to bet my check. <laughs> that Mike, that John Black uh -oh. probably approached Mike. That told, do, do, do you realize what you just said? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he said the, John Black is just on it. The you know, I mean, he pick it up right away. It, it's not hard. It, it, it's not hard. These are things you just don't do. And not only, not only do you not do it because it's so disrespectful to Kobe. You don't do it because you know Kobe. Yes. Yeah. You know that okay. Kobe is not going to take that lightly. Okay, one level deeper. Sure. Is it possible that D'Antoni is emboldened by the fact that he knows he has Jim Boss yes. at his back? It ain't possible. Okay. It's it money. It's, it's money. You are absolutely positively right on the money. But you know something? Jim Boss is going to have to make a decision at some point. Because, first of all, you're going to lose this first-round series like I told you they would, okay? Like I've been saying all year long, they're going to get to the first yet. round. They, we'll it's talk over. about this over. Fine, fine. That's fine. Yeah. But I'm telling you. Once that happens, Laker Nation is going to fall back, and they're going to have a time to reflect. And by the way, just coincidentally, let me mention this. Is it an accident or a mere coincidence to y'all that Kobe is tweeting, and so is Phil? No. Phil Jackson? Is, is I'm not talking about tweeting. It, it's not like Phil Jackson always had a Twitter account, and we understand that he just had it started weeks ago or whatever the case may be. But Phil tweeted yesterday, and Phil 
basically defended Kobe. We understand. We know what you're going through, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's not an accident. Jim Boss is going to find himself in a situation right now where you got to make a decision because it's Laker Nation we're talking about here. Yeah. They're sitting there with Dan Tony in the building chanting Phil's name. We want Phil. They are unapologetic about yeah, it. Yeah. And Dan Tony has to be. And, and listen, yeah. it's not like the man is ignorant, don't know the game about a basketball. It's not his ignorance because the man knows the game of basketball, Skip. It's his stubbornness. He wants to do things his way. He wants to say, damn, everybody else. He doesn't care. Y'all go kick rocks. This is how I'm going to do it because I'm going to be me. That's his problem. Yeah. It's the stubbornness. It's the sensitivity to everything. And the fact that it, it evokes a reaction from him, but it ain't the right reaction. This is Laker Nation we're talking about here. This man was disrespectful. I'm going to say it one last time.